it's Saturday and it's week 19 of the 2024 baking challenge. Now I know tomorrow is Mother's Day and you might be expecting something flowery and pretty and I almost went there but gosh darn it I love coffee cake and I can't tell you the last time that I had coffee cake so that's what we're making today and buckle up because there are three parts to this recipe. I'm making up for last week. Last week, we took it easy. It was a simple bake. It was very nice. It was tasty, all those things. We're gonna get a little more complicated today. So get your ingredients and let's bake. Well, like I said, this recipe is a little more complicated than last week's and I want to apologize about that but at the same time I'm not going to apologize because coffee cake cinnamon streusel coffee cake it looks good it sounds great and I'm here for it so the first thing we're gonna do is preheat your oven to 350 but open that oven door first and make sure there's nothing in it um, since I am currently in my sourdough era I have been keeping my baby sourdough in the oven because my house is like a refrigerator. So I happen to know that there is sourdough in here that needs to come out just for a little while. Um, and I should have done that earlier, but we are going to be preheating our oven to 350 degrees. I know, they're so cute. And Yesterday I made a loaf of sourdough sandwich bread and this morning I made pretzels with sourdough discard and it was amazing. Okay, 350 degrees. Right, almost forgot to do that. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to prepare your pans. Now you could go about this two different ways. You could do the large rectangle, what is that, 9 by 13? Or you could do two 8 inch rounds. I am going with the rounds because how much coffee cake do I really need? I can make these rounds, I can give one away, it'll be great. Now in order to properly grease your pans, if you're using a glass pan you can just use the spray stuff. Um, I'm kind of snooty about it so I'm going to use my uh, vegetable spread and my butter. That has always been a surefire way for me to get things out of pans. I got these food service gloves like four years ago and I still have a bunch and this is the pretty much the only thing I use these for um, because I hate you know I'm a texture girl I cannot stand shortening it's gross um, like I know realistically it's not like you know animal fat or anything weird but I don't like the way it feels, so the glove goes on. And then, see, you're just smearing it all over the inside. Make sure you get the corners of your pan. Do the edges all the way up to the top. A little bit more. It doesn't take much. Um, and then, hold on a minute. I'm trying really hard not to get this on my hand. Um, and then, just stick the glove in there and wiggle it off. Then you're gonna drop some flour in there and you're gonna make sure that that flour coats the entire inside, the bottom and the sides. I do this over, I just tap it all the way around um, and then I do the sides over the sink so that the, uh, actually I'll do it over the other pan so I don't waste any flour. And then the second pan or the last pan that I'm flouring will do over the sink. But this ensures that the cake comes out of the pan every single time. And if you've never made cake from scratch, it's okay. It's honestly not that hard. I know it sounds daunting, because um, anything from scratch can be a little intimidating, but it's not. It's, you know, it's all the usual things, and you've already done so much, if you've been following along with this challenge, that I know you can handle from scratch cake. So, all right. I really should have done at least one of these ahead of time. <laughs> That's okay. Hang on a minute. Sorry. Just like I said, make sure that you're getting the 
vegetable shortening, if you're going with this method, make sure you're doing the vegetable shortening all over and then make sure that your flour covers the vegetable shortening. You don't want to see any of the shiny pan at all. No shiny pan. Okay, that step is done. That is the last thing we'll need the vegetable shortening for. It's gross. I don't know why. I know it's, you know, it is whatever, but it's kind of itchy. Oh, the other thing you're going to want to make sure you do before you start this recipe, you're going to need your sour cream. Sour cream? Is that right? Uh, yes, sour cream or plain yogurt, your eggs, your butter, and your milk for the cake part. You're going to want to make sure you get that out a couple hours ahead of time and just let it sit out in a safe place. Um, for me, it's the microwave because cats and leaving things out. So all that's going to need to be room temperature. But we're going to start with our topping. Topping is going to be super easy. You're going to need a mixing bowl and a spatula. Whoop. Let me get this put down here. Okay. We are going to do one whole cup of sugar, granulated sugar. This is a half cup. So I'm going to do this twice. Look at me mathing. Um, because it's really hard to fit a whole cup inside these big jars. So there is my cup of sugar. And it did say flour, right? Yeah, one cup of flour. And you can use a knife to level it. I just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Okay, here we go. What else do we need? A fourth a teaspoon of table salt if you use unsalted butter, which I do. Uh, a whole tablespoon of cinnamon, which doesn't seem like nearly enough to me, but that's okay. This may be a new, yeah, new container of cinnamon. My store was out of cinnamon for so long that the minute it came back in stock, I bought like five because I go through a lot of cinnamon. I don't know if you know this about me, but it's one of my favorite things. It doesn't have to be fall for me to require some kind of cinnamon sacrifice. Oop, that's a lot. All right. I like it. I'm here for it. Okay, what else? I feel like there's something else. Salt, sugar. Oh, yes, our six tablespoons of melted butter. All right, and then you're just going to mix it all up. I'm going to get it all mixed. All mixed up. And now that song is going to be stuck in my head. If you know, you know, Gen Xers. At least if you were a cool one. <laughs> I should have used a bigger bowl. I did the math in my head, and it didn't quite work out. Um, also, you should probably mix this up. Yeah, you should mix your dry ingredients and then add your butter. Um, and it's going to be clumpy because we're making like a, that streusel kind of topping. So, what am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. Sugar, salt, flour, cinnamon, butter. No, I'm not mixing it. You're not missing anything. Um, if you're not clumping up properly, might I recommend saying fork it. Just fork it. Um, because sometimes a fork can really make those crumbles, can make the difference. So there we go. Because you do, you don't just want to bite into your coffee cake and get a big clump of flour. So you really want to make sure it's all mixed up, which is why you should have, you know, mixed your dry ingredients first. This might be one of those past Katie, future Katie moments. I'll have to check it out when I when I throw this video together. So I hope everybody made it through the storms this week. I know that a lot of people have had a lot of damage and we were very lucky this week. Um, 
We didn't lose power for more than a second. The driveway got washed out because we had like two and a half inches of rain in an hour. <laughs> in one day, two and a half inches of rain, that's a lot of rain. Um, so the driveway's a mess, but the power stayed on and, and we didn't have any water in the house other than about two feet into the garage, which was fine. No damage done. Couple limbs down. Uh, so lots of people around us had way worse. And we got lucky. All right, my topping looks crumbly and fantastic, so I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna put it right over here. Okay, gather your ingredients, because next up, we're gonna make the filling. Okay, so the filling, right? Coffee cake is cake, filling, cake, topping. So the filling is very simple. There's only three ingredients. We need a cup of dark brown sugar or light brown sugar. I'm going with light brown sugar simply because the dark brown sugar, I'm gonna make bagels again, and that was a huge thing for that. Um, make sure that it's a packed cup. Now I'm using my one third cup, so I gotta do this three times. Look at me with the fractions. It's the only way I can do fractions is if I'm baking. And even then it's nice if I, uh, I'm Scott, check my work. But I can do this one, this one's easy enough. All right, I really, really, once again, should have gotten the a bigger bowl because that's not big enough. <laughs> I'm gonna make a mess. Um, okay, uh, all right, we got our brown sugar. We're gonna need a tablespoon and a half of um, cinnamon. Cinnamon. Um, and it turns out I did put too much cinnamon in my topping because this is uh, a tablespoon and a half measuring spoon. I forgot that I have this one. Um, so, oops. But at the same time, all right, cool. Like you can't have too much cinnamon in my book. There we go. And then we're gonna add a teaspoon of cocoa powder. That says, the, in the recipe it says it's for coloring. Um, whatever, it's chocolate, I'll add it. It doesn't upset me any, except this is a brand new one. I did finish the other one off. Gosh darn it, nothing is opening correctly for me today. It's just the way it's going, I guess. All right, let me get this cover off without doing too much damage, I think. Maybe. Did get it all over my hand. Oh well. Uh, what did I say, a teaspoon? Yeah, one teaspoon. I'm gonna make mine a heaping teaspoon. See, it's pretty much the same color as cinnamon, so I don't know what the point is, but there we are. Okay, and you're gonna wanna mix that up. Do, do, do. So you don't have to do the cocoa powder if you don't want to. It does say that that is optional because it is strictly for coloring. I'm a big one for following the recipe the first time. Just, and then if it's something I like, but I didn't like it exactly, I'll make changes. So a uh, bigger bowl would have been a lot easier for mixing. So that was, that was a mistake. Or I could see even like pulsing this in a blender to mix it up. Oh, I don't know, brown sugar is kind of one of those sticky things that maybe wouldn't go well in a blender. I'm just talking and talk now. I don't know. I don't know things. I'm just here for a tasty time, not an informed time. Um, so I hope everyone has a lot of really fantastic plans for Mother's Day. Scott asked me what I want to do, and I said uh, yard work <laughs> because it's supposed to be dry, and it has not been dry in two weeks. So I have things I'd like to get done outside. I have gardening things to do, yard things to do, um, and quite frankly, I don't feel like going out in the world on Sunday. Although I never feel like going out in the world, so it's fine. 
Uh, okay, that's pretty well mixed. It's a couple, a couple bits here and there. So we're gonna set this aside, and then we're gonna get started on our cake. So set this aside, take a deep breath, gather your cake ingredients, and I'll see you right back. Okay, it's cake time. Oh, paddle. If you're using a mixer, obviously you're gonna need your paddle. Boy, I'm really with it today. But honestly, I've been up since like 3.30, so, you know, it is what it is. Okay, paddle. You're going to start with your butter, I think. Yep, we're gonna start with butter. Grab your spatula. My spatula is not in here. Why? Yep, we'll go with the blue one today. It's not like I don't have five million spatulas. Now, butter should be room temperature. I have left mine out for two hours. It was still not room temperature. Well, I take that back. It was room temperature, but room temperature is cold. So uh, add 10 seconds in the microwave, and then you kind of go from there. You don't want it melted. You just want it room temperature. Okay, now your salt. We have a teaspoon of salt. Oh, and that's 12 tablespoons of butter, by the way. So, although I had 13 because who needs one tablespoon left over? It'll be fine. Uh, sugars. So, we have one and one half cup of granulated sugar. So, since I'm using a half a cup, that's going to be three of these. Always make sure you're checking that you're using the correct measuring tool or adjust. Okay. And now we're going to need one third cup of brown sugar, right? One third cup of brown sugar, which is great because that's what I was using to measure this out when I needed a whole cup. Make sure it's packed. Brown sugar should always be packed. It's very easy to do. All right. Brown sugar. Uh, what else are we putting in here right now? Uh, da, 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 da. And vanilla. Vanilla, we are doing two teaspoons, I believe. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Yes, that is correct. I am going to measure the vanilla this time. Look at me being a responsible-ish baker. Oh, well, that... So I'm not good at measuring things. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's still going to taste great. It's going to taste even better with a little bit of extra... Vanilla, okay, well combined and smooth. So, while that is going, we are going to mix up the sour cream or yogurt, it's one or the other, whatever you're using, and the milk. All of that should be room temperature. I think, yeah, I should be able to fit it all in a small, you know what, no, I'm gonna, I'm going to use one of these big bowls because I don't trust myself. And if I had really been thinking, I would have just put this in a bigger measuring cup so that I could add the sour cream to it. I'm using sour cream. Um, yogurt's fine. I just feel like sour cream really gives it a little bit of a bolder flavor. So, eh, okay. What is it with me and lids today? That was a cup and a fourth of milk, and this will be three fourths of a cup of either your sour cream or your yogurt. Oh, that smells so good at room temperature. Let me tell you. Three fourths of a cup. That's one fourth. I'll take it. I really thought I was going to be a little bit more organized with this bake because it's a little more involved. Um, that has not been my experience today. So sorry. You're getting the whole chaos baking experience. There's not much I can do about it. Except just cross my fingers and hope this turns out and that I have Mother's Day coffee cake. That's all I really want out of life. Gardening time and coffee cake and spending time with my guys. Oh, I just got milk everywhere.
Well, let's see here. How much do we need to... Well combined. You don't need to whisk out all the lumps, but it should be well combined. I'm actually going to go ahead and use a small whisk for this. My little bitty baby whisk. Because um, I really don't want lumps. I would imagine an immersion blender would also work well. All right, that is smooth and pretty looking. This is all blended. See what I said, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. All right, we're gonna add the eggs one at a time. And there is a reason why you only add them one at a time. That is so that they can be completely blended. There's one. Um, do be sure that you're cracking your eggs not in what you're making. Not just because of eggshells, but because last week I had yet another egg that I cracked open to make scrambled eggs and it was bad inside. And if I had put that directly into what I was making, the whole mix would have had to be thrown out because gross. So the reason we're doing these eggs is because one at a time is because you really do want it to be combined before you add the next one. Um, oh, it's such a pretty color. It's a nice light color. And then when you add the yellow of the egg, it really just gets extra pretty. But I'm gonna scrape the sides down and get all of this sugar mixture incorporated in here. That will help. Boy, this KitchenAid has been giving me fits about starting up. Don't love that for an expensive piece of equipment that pretty much sat unused for like a whole year. All right, that egg is in. I'm gonna pour the last one in and let it do its thing. And while that's going, we are going to mix up the dry ingredients. You're gonna need a bigger bowl for this. We're dirtying a lot of dishes today. Just accept that that is life and move on. And maybe ask someone else to do the dishes. What could happen, right? All right, so in this bowl, we are going to make our flour mixture. So, do to do to do. Da, 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 da. Oh, never mind. We don't have to do that. Where do we add the baking powder at? Oh, the baking powder should have gone in with the sugar. Sorry. I thought we were mixing all of the dry ingredients together. I was wrong. All right, baking powder, two and a half teaspoons. I have a half teaspoon in here, so that means I gotta do five of these. One. Two. Three. <laughs> you definitely wanna add this before the egg because it'll get incorporated a lot better. Four, one more. I'm kind of scraping the bottom of the proverbial barrel with this. Okay. I think that was five. Okay. Do, 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 do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to do a flour. We're gonna alternate adding flour with the milk sour cream mix. So this could get a little messy. Um, I'm going to ditch my whatchamadoodle and I'm actually gonna pour this in a big, see I am, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna use all the dishes today. But this will make it a lot easier for me to pour this in and then stop pouring and then pour it some more. <sighs> okay, how much flour did we need? Does anybody remember? No, because I did not say. We need three and one fourth cups of flour. <sighs> I am using a half cup, so that will be six, and then my big one. Ah, okay. 
All right, we're gonna throw our first one of flour in there. Okay. And then, a fly got in because I had the door open, the atrium, and then we're gonna add some of our milk slash sour cream mixture. I should get my counters out because I'm gonna lose count. <laughs> If you have ADHD or dyslexia, keep your twisty ties. Count them out ahead of time. I'm gonna need six of those. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. But I already added one, so that goes over there. And then every time you do a measurement, you put a twist tie off to the one side. And then when you run out of twist ties, you know that you have added everything that you're supposed to add. Except I'm gonna put a twist tie in that because I need to remember to do the three fourths cup, not just the three. Okay. Do, 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 do. So you're not gonna want to do, if you're using a mixer, you're not gonna want to do a very fast setting with this. It needs to be gentle. You don't want to get a lot of air into your cake mix. Make my twist tie, throw in my flour. It smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this. Of course, if you're making it with me, then you absolutely can already smell it. And that's great. And I love that for you because I know I love that for me. This is good stuff. Let me just prep this. It looks so fluffy. Um, it's a very fluffy cake batter. And I think it's very pretty. Twisty tie. Adding my liquid. There's that fly again. Missed. Mr. Miyagi, I am not. This is a beautiful texture and color, and it almost smells like a sugar cookie. Um, so I'm really, really excited about this. I, I've made plenty of cake from scratch, um, but nothing quite like this. So this is very, very exciting. All right, last one of these, and then I need the big one. Just need to let it mix a little more. It's just so pretty. It's very fluffy and creamy. Okay. A little bit more liquid in here. And then I'll save the rest for after we do our three fourths of a cup. I love this measuring cup set because it does come with some, I like this as a three fourths of a cup. None of my other measuring cups came with this, but this one did and I love that so much. Okay, boop, 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 there we go. That goes over there. Now I can add in the rest of my liquid, nice and slow, trying to time it so that the beater doesn't get it, so it doesn't whip it up and out. I don't love that I can't, <laughs> I can't get things closer there. You know, KitchenAid is fine, but I, there are some fundamental problems with the layout and the design and the fact that it doesn't always start when I flip the switch. So it's frustrating. I do miss my old mixer a lot. Like this one has a better motor and it's got stronger, um, so it's just stronger. But the other one was a tilt head and uh, it was really easy for me to get things into and out of the bowl um, while I was making stuff. See, look, this is really fluffy and light. 
have some flour here on the side. And dig that down. Okay. And I just want you all to know that while I'm talking to you and doing this, um, the Tortured Poets Department is just playing on a loop in my brain. And it has been since it came out, and I don't understand why, because I'm not, like, I, I, Taylor Swift is great. Like, get your money, girl. She's got talent, that's for sure. But I don't consider myself, like, a Swifty. I have no desire to go to a concert or, you know, buy merchandise or anything. But, man, it's a good album. This is good. Oh, my gosh, this smells so great. Oh so good okay that is mixed I don't want to over mix everything's incorporated so I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna clean some of this up we're gonna come back and we are going to layer everything in our pans and get them into the oven so I'll see you back in a couple minutes okay if you are using a rectangular baking sheet you're going to pour half of your batter into your sheet if you're using two of the round pans, you're going to pour a cup and a third into each pan. So I happen to have a third of a cup here and I'm gonna, <laughs> it's a thick batter. It looks light and fluffy, but it is thick. She's thick y'all, that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna do four of these and then you're gonna make sure that you kind of level it I've got heaping, I probably shouldn't heap quite as much. I can always make up for it um, on the top half. All right, there's that one. Um, also, I like to put my cake pans on a baking sheet because a lot of times the recipe will tell you, you know, fill it a fourth of the way full or three fourths of the way full. Well, I can't. I can't eyeball that. So until they start putting measurements on the inside of cake pans, I'm gonna keep overfilling them and they're going to overflow when they bake. And a cake pan can really save the inside of your oven. Also, it's just a little bit steadier to get it in and out of the oven for me. Um, when you have some mobility issues, you gotta accommodate, okay. We're going to gently, so we're not really disturbing our flour too much, we are going to gently stir, or not stir, spread your batter around. You wanna make sure you get it all the way to the edges, all the way to the edges there. It does not want to stay up against the edges, so we gotta, boy, it really doesn't. It's because of the flour. It's fine. It's not a bad thing, just slightly frustrating. Okay, we are, we are struggling. That's okay, take your time. It's not a race. Also, I have found that sometimes just Giving it a little tappy tappy. Okay, now you're gonna sprinkle your filling evenly on the top. So if you're doing one uh, pan, you don't have to really worry about dividing it evenly. If you have the two round pans, you definitely need to try to make sure that you're staying even with things. Make sure you're getting that all the way to the edges too. And if you have any lumps of brown sugar, go ahead and pick those out. Like here's a, here's a hard lump of brown sugar. I'm gonna throw that in the sink because that is not, has the potential to not melt in the oven. And we don't want that. So, okay, now I'm going to shouldn't dump, really just sprinkle, because then you're gonna have to spread it around and it's gonna be tricky. Um, so sprinkle, it's more tedious, but 
it does do a better job of evenly distributing your filling. And that's what we need, an evenly distributed filling. You don't necessarily have to use all of your filling either. I feel like it's a little excessive. Um, I'm going to, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm going to use it all. But I do feel like maybe you don't have to. I'm actually going to use it to try to fill in any gaps in the uh, batter that I have. And since I couldn't get my batter all the way to the edges, I'm going to... I'm going to compensate here. All right. Yeah, honestly, I anticipated having no power today. So I took the day off work, which is nice because that means I get to do this. Okay, filling is done. Now we're going to spread the remaining batter on top. I'm gonna go um, cup for cup on this. I could try to eyeball it and just dump it out of here, but as I previously mentioned, eyeballing is not my strong suit. So that's okay. Just gonna go one for one. It took four to cover the bottom. I'm assuming that's gonna be the case for the top. But now that I'm looking at what's left in here, it might not be. <laughs> it might be that we have three and a half per side. I don't love that. Yeah, okay. Well, shoot. No, we'll get four. It's, it's a very fluffy, Fluffy batter. Make sure you use all of it though. Don't leave any batter in there. Okay. Um, this is thick. Give me a minute. It smells so good, I almost licked the spoon, and then I had to remind myself that there were not one, not two, but three raw eggs in here, and we don't do that because we don't like getting food poisoning. So no licking the spoon. It's not good for you. All right, and then everything that's left in here will go to cake number one. And then you have to spread it around again <laughs> without trying to muck up your thing. Table knife to gently swirl the filling into the batter. Huh. As though you're making marble. Okay, so we're gonna spread this around, and then if you've ever made a marble cake, you will understand what I'm going to ask you to do. If you haven't, don't worry about it. It's not complicated. You're just gonna need a butter knife and some patience. This is the most frustrating batter I have ever worked with in my entire life. So the top is not gonna look pretty, but we're also gonna cover the top so you're not gonna see it. All right, get your table knife. We are marbling. Oh my gosh, I have used up every single spoon in the house. So you take your table knife and what you do is you kind of take it and swirl, um, swirl through the top layer, which is not spreading for me. Um, I'm gonna use the table knife to spread this batter all around and then I'll go through and marble. You want to make sure you get your batter all the way to the edges. Try not to scrape through your, if you used a flour to coat your pan, try not to scrape through that. Okay, there. Now you're going to insert your knife and just kind of cut through a little and then you're going to make sure that you seal that top again. See? It kind of does a little bit of marbling on the inside. This is stressing me out. I hope you guys aren't stressed. We're trying to have fun. 
not be stressy. Um, hard for me to swirl these pans when they're right next to each other. So I'm just going to move this one a little bit. <laughs> so much fun. If you want to skip the marbling process, I guess you can. I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead and this one's marbling a lot easier than the other one, although I do have some of it pulling away from the side. So I'm going to try to try to put that back. My gosh, this smells so good. <laughs> okay. Gently swirl. Don't combine the filling and batter thoroughly. Just swirl, swirl the filling through the batter. Next, you're going to sprinkle the topping over the batter in the pan. So remember that topping that we made first, here it is. It's crumbly, it's fantastic, it's not as mixed as I thought it was, oops, my bad. And you should probably use some kind of spoon for this. Cause that'll, or your hand, just, you know what, that's fine, my hands are clean. I'm gonna swirl, sprinkle. <laughs> Sprinkle your topping all over. Try to make sure you're getting it all the way to the edges. Um, yeah. Okay. Once again, I don't know if you're gonna need to use all of the topping. I feel like it's an excessive amount of topping and probably not completely necessary. Just as long as you're, I don't know what the dog is growling about. As long as your cake is covered, as long as your batter is covered, um, that's what we're going for here. So, maybe use most of it. I don't know. I'm kind of using my hand also. I've got some larger lumps in here. You definitely want your lumps. That's what gives you the crumble. Um, but you don't need massive amounts of lumps. So some of those I'm using my hand to kind of crush a little bit. Um, do, do, do. Make sure you get it all the way to the edge. See, I have a lot of crumble left over. Um, so I'm kind of, it's making me second guess <laughs> how much I've put on and if I should put all of it on or not. Kind of go with my instincts here. Um, I think, I think I'm going to stop. I say as I add just a little bit more because this is excessive and yeah, we'll see if I was right or not. Hang on a minute. Let me wash the sugar off of my hand. And then let's talk about putting this in the oven. I actually haven't looked at the baking time on this yet, so I don't know what it's going to be. Okay, bake the cake until it is a dark golden brown around the edges, medium golden with no light patches showing on the top, and a toothpick or cake tester inserted into the center comes out clean about 55 to 60 minutes. Remember, it is a 350 degree oven, so it's a dense cake. It's gonna take a little bit, not a big deal. Oh, I'm sorry, 55 to 60 minutes for the nine by 13, 50 to 55 minutes for your rounds. It says nine inch rounds, I think mine are eight. Oops, no wonder it uh, didn't take quite as much filling. I should have. I should have checked on that. Okay, um, when pressed gently in the middle, the cake should spring back. Now this is gonna be hot sugar on the top, so please be careful if you're pressing. Okay, let's see. Into the oven we go. I'm setting my timer for 50 minutes, and then I'm going to clean up the mess that I have made, and I will see you back when we are pulling this out of the oven. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, well, it's almost been 50 minutes. I'm on the last minute. I like this oven because it does give me a beep um, when there's one minute left, so that gives me some time. 
Um, so remember, it needs to be golden brown on the edges and cake tester or a toothpick in the middle needs to come out clean. If it still has wet batter on it, it's got to go back in the oven, five minutes, 10 minutes. You just kind of have to play it by ear at that point. So um, the other thing is that this recipe does say that it can be um, served right out of the pan. Please don't do that unless it's a glass pan. If you're using metal pans, for the love of all that's holy, please do not use a knife to cut. You're going to scratch your pan and we don't do that to good cake pans. We just don't, we do not do that. Um, I can tell you right now, if I give it a little jiggle, it is still moving in the middle. So 50 minutes was not long enough. I am gonna put mine in for another 10 minutes because my oven is a little wonky and try again in 10 minutes. So fingers crossed, they'll be done. Okay, 10 minutes, timer's going off again. Let's pull it out and cross our fingers because the whole house smells so good. Um, not wibbly wobbly in the middle. Mine did do quite a bit of rising, so that's excellent. It smells so good. Let's give it a little test Clean. Clean, all right, these are done. Now the recipe says wait 20 minutes so that everything is cooled down and then serve it right out of the pan. I'm not gonna do that. Hopefully um, as they cool, they'll constrict and I will be able to get mine out without too much of a mess. Um, this crumbly topping did not really set up. I think maybe next time I'll like spritz it with melted butter and see if that helps it hold. I don't know, but I will see you back in 20 minutes for the taste test. Okay, um, it's been 20 minutes. I have loosened this cake. This pan is still really hot and I don't know how I'm gonna get it out and onto the plate without making a mess. Um, so, in typical me fashion, I think I'm just gonna make a mess. I don't know. I truly don't know. Uh, I should have thought of this. I did not think of this. Maybe if I put a plate on top. You know what? Let's do two plates. I'm already doing a ton of dishes today. Why not? Let's see if I can make this happen without completely wrecking the top, which is not something I really want to do. At the same time, I really don't want to be cutting in my nice cake pans. That makes me a sad panda. We don't want that. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get my hands under here. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is not going well. I don't know why I expected it to. Boom. Okay, I just felt the cake shift. Let's old shaky how do you do there oh that is a mess inside pretty now <laughs> we're gonna reverso uno boom that was not so bad okay what happens when i take this off oh yeah it looks awesome it did not fall apart we definitely have our layers there in the middle and because this is my mother's day cake, I'm just gonna take a bite of it right off of there. And let's do our taste test. Oh, this is exciting. It is definitely warm. It is really very pretty inside. I'd like a smaller bite than that. Um, oh my gosh, now I'm making a mess everywhere. I know this is gonna be so hot. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. This is so good. The cake is super, oh, see, I dropped it in there. Super duper moist. Um, I think I did put a little too much filling in mine because it's really separated. Um, and that's okay. It still tastes really good. The filling is excellent. It's kind of ooey and gooey, but not too bad. Not like molten. 
Um, and the topping gives you that, uh, that kick of the cinnamon. I and mean, this is just really, really good. Mm. Mm-hmm. The cake is just delicious. I am so happy that I picked this recipe. It's a very moist cake. It's very soft. It has not an overpowering sweetness. Um, you have plenty of cinnamon. It's just sweet enough, but it's not crazy sweet. I definitely like that I added the chocolate, uh, the cocoa powder in there. I, I can almost have a hint of chocolate. Um, it goes really, really well with this. It's like when you add cinnamon to your hot chocolate. Have you ever done that? Because I do that and it's really good. It's not gonna win any beauty pageants, honestly, but it's super, super tasty. And I'm gonna give this one a 10 out of 10 because gosh darn it, it's just that good. Well, that wraps it up for this week of the 2024 baking challenge. I hope that you baked along. I hope that you had some sweet successes here with this one. And if you're new here, I put these videos out every single Saturday, so you can hit that subscribe button to follow along. Now, this is my challenge, it doesn't have to be your challenge. You can pick and choose. There's a lot of fantastic recipes that I am baking for the very first time. Um, so if you decide that you wanna follow along, you should go follow the Facebook page as well because every Wednesday morning, I'm gonna release the name of what we're baking and the ingredient list so that you can get your shopping done. Well, I'm gonna go have cake for dinner and I will see you next week. Happy Mother's Day. <music>